Hey guys and welcome back to Pro Speed Baseball. One of the most controversial subjects in baseball or hitting instruction is squashing the bug. There's tons of instruction out there saying that it's completely wrong. Well, is squashing the bug completely wrong? Is there a place for it in hitting? Or is it a tool that we can use to begin to learn how to use our hips to create speed in the swing? Well, those are exactly the questions I'm going to answer in this video. Let's go ahead and get started. Now squashing the bug is simply a nickname that coaches and instructors use to teach players how to rotate on the back foot. Now before we get into squashing the bug, I want to show you what's ideal for proper backside rotation with this back foot. Now in an ideal world, when we, throughout our swing, our back foot's going to rotate and our shoelaces are going to point straight up our toe line and we're going to get very high off the ground and very light on our toe. And sometimes you'll even see in a lot of big swing professional swings that back toe come up off the ground a little bit because we get a really good weight transfer. Now that's ideal and that's in a very advanced move that requires a lot of repetitions and a lot of training, proper training and getting proper instruction, that kind of stuff. Now we know that this is an advanced move so we can conclude easily that there needs to be some sort of progression to get to this advanced move. We don't just go from swinging flat footed or not knowing what to do with the backside to an ideal weight shifted position where that back foot's really light off the ground. So this is where squashing the bug comes in. We need to first learn how to rotate this back foot properly and the reason why we rotate is for a number of reasons. It, we help, it helps us with balance throughout the end of our swing and also the relationship between our feet and our hips correlate to where we need our hips to open our feet and we need our feet to open our hips. Therefore you can see if I take a swing here and I don't rotate this backside at all, my hips won't go to their fullest extent. Now if I let my backside ro rotate around, we can see my hips get their full range of motion and we can effectively use our hips in the baseball swing. I know you guys have heard use your hips. It's a very simple thing. If we learn how to rotate on our backside properly, we will use our hips properly. So we can conclude from all of this that we can actually use the squash the bug method as a stepping stone to get to that ideal contact position using our hips, staying balanced. And you'll see, and then the really cool thing that I see in a lot of the, my guys that I work with is that once they learn this method, eventually they start getting into that ideal contact position with that backside without even thinking about it, using this as a stepping stone. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna show you exactly how to squash the bug or rotate on that backside properly so that you can use that yourself to start getting into that ideal contact position. So in the perfect squash the bug position, there are four very simple checkpoints that we have to follow. And what we wanna do is, it's very easy to check these checkpoints because all we're gonna do is hold our finish at the completion of our swing. So if I go ahead and take a swing here. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause, hold that, take a look at my back foot and then go over my checkpoints. So that's something very easy to do when we hold our finish. Now the first checkpoint is that we're gonna want our back heel very high up off of the ground into the finish of the swing. We're gonna have a nice flexion in our calf. Some guys are gonna feel this, or it's gonna feel, this should feel pretty uncomfortable, especially when we're holding our finish because this is gonna be a very athletic position. Now we keep in mind, this is only gonna happen for a split second in the swing, then we gotta run or jog around the bases when we hit a home run, okay? But when we're, when we're checking ourselves, we want to have really high heel, nice flex calf, and making sure we're in a nice solid position. Now the second checkpoint is probably the most important of the squash the bug method or the median uh, backside rotation is where our shoelaces are pointing at the finish of our swing. So ideally if we take a line, we draw it right down our toes and we make our swing our, our shoelaces should be pointing right up that same toe line, okay? This ins ensures we've used our hips to their maximum ability. Now, the other, on the other hand of that, we have over and under rotation, which I'll go over here shortly. If we under rotate our back foot, this heel doesn't quite get on top of our toes and the shoelaces tend to point off towards the opposite field. This is a huge power killer because like I said before, uh, at the beginning of the video that our hips and our feet directly correlate so if we don't turn our foot all the way around we're not going to be able to get the full use of our hips and maximize speed in the swing. Now on the other hand of that we have over rotation on the backside where this heel likes to get outside of the toes and the shoelaces tend to point towards our pull side. 
Now, although this may give us a little bit more speed than under rotation, it's a huge swing killer because it kills balance and it tends to make us spin off the ball in our swing. Okay, so just to recap that run real quick, shoelace is pointing right up the center, up, the, up our toe line in the finish of the swing. Okay, so the third checkpoint is a very simple checkpoint and it's just that we want to maintain nice flexion in our knee. So we want to have a nice little bit of bend in our knee back here and we don't want to let our leg get straight up in the air. Okay, the reason for this is that this ensures that we stay athletic, we stay in the swing, and that we're not jumping to the ball throughout our swing, okay? So very simple checkpoint, keep that knee nice and flex. Now my, the fourth checkpoint is my favorite, and I call it no dancing, okay? So when we start our swing, our, our toes are gonna be, our back foot's gonna be in a certain place, and we're gonna want our toes to be in that same place relative to the, uh, the finish of the swing, or relative to where they start at the finish of the swing. So if we were to draw a circle around our back foot at the start of the swing, our toes should be inside of that circle at the completion of the swing. So we'll go over the four checkpoints real quick, just a quick recap. We're gonna make our swing, hold our finish, okay? We're gonna check that the, the, the heel is nice and high, the shoelaces are pointing up the center of the field, we have some nice flexion in our knee, and that we didn't dance with that back foot. Now I'm gonna show you one more from the face-on view, just so we can go over it again real quick. Okay, we're gonna make our swing. Okay, checkpoint, heels high, shoelaces are pointing up the center of the field. Okay, my, my leg's nice and flexed, and I didn't dance around. It started in the same place, or it finished in the same place that it started. Now I wanna say one thing real quick about squashing the bug, because I know there's a lot of guys out there who think squashing the bug is wrong. Yes, there is a wrong way to squash the bug as well, and I wanna go over that very quickly, and that's pretty much, we don't do those four checkpoints that I went over in the whole video, okay? If we don't let that heel get high, we end up just kinda of spinning our foot and being really lazy. You know, if we let this leg straight, straighten out and we do this, yeah, we've rotated our back foot, but now this leg's all straight. You know, and then if we, uh, if we don't, oh, that's not maintaining the flexion. Um, if we over-rotate or under-rotate, the wrong way, we're not squashing the bug properly or rotating properly. And if we're letting this foot dance around in, this, in the swing at all, then those are wrong ways to squash the bug. So yes, if we're, if we're rotating improperly on the, bad, uh, on the backside, then yes, squashing the bug is not good. But if we properly do it, or we properly squash the bug, or we properly learn how to rotate on the backside with these checkpoints, we'll be well on our way to getting to that ideal position. So like always, I wanna give you guys something that you can do at home to start learning how to get into that proper backside rotation position the most efficient way. Okay, so what I have for you is a very simple progression that you can follow where we use our gear system where we start off a little bit with slower swings and we bump it up a little by little until we get to game speed swings. So we're gonna start off in 25% swings, then go up to 50, then 75%, and then all the way to game speed. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're going to pause and hold our finish on every single swing and check our position. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with nice, easy 25% swings. Okay, we're gonna hold our finish, check our position, make sure everything's right, and that'll be one rep. Okay, we're gonna do that at 25% for 25 reps, then we're gonna bump it up to 50% swings where we put on, put on oh, just a tad bit more speed. Okay. We're gonna check ourselves again on every single swing. And remember, we're not gonna count the rep unless our checkpoints are met. We've hit all four of those checkpoints on every single swing. Okay, then we're gonna ramp it up to 75%. Okay, nice little bit more oomph into the swing, checking ourselves on every single time on camera in a mirror, or we can just physically look down with our head. And then we're gonna bump it up to game speed. Okay, nice full speed swings, really nice solid finish, making sure we're checking that back foot every single time. Guys, we got 25 reps and each progression for a total of 100 swings. Guys, do this progression, check yourself on every single swing, and you're gonna be well on your way to get into that proper backside rotation. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, stay tuned, I got a great bonus coming up for you. I'm gonna play a preview out of one of the videos in our power hitting series that you can check out exclusively by clicking on the link that's popping up right now, or at the end of the preview, or in the description below. Go ahead and check that out. If you guys have any questions or comments on this video, or anything baseball, leave them in the comment section below. I'll be sure to get to them personally. And like always, if you guys can like, subscribe, 
and plus one this video on Google. That really helps me grow the channel. It's going great. And it's thanks to you guys. Good luck with your games, guys, and I'll see you guys soon. We want to take our hands and we want to bring them back in front of our body. If we were having a line right down our feet and our feet are dead square, we can imagine a wall coming right up out of that line in front of our face. And what we want to do is keep our hands in front of that wall at all times. They should never get behind this wall at all. Some of your better hitters will stay in front or get right on this wall, but they never go behind the ball. So if you watch them from down the line, you'll see that their hands stay in front of their body the whole time and now they're able to go from point A to point B and get as solid a contact as possible to hit home runs. So what we're going to do to work on this